Where's Sam? He's got the opener. In 1994, Trev, it was a year of turmoil and tribulation. That's right, Sam. Boris Yeltsin took his troops into Chechnya. Nelson Mandela took over as president of South Africa. And Nudge took his last ever backhander from Mr Kelly and Hey Dad. But like a bright shining beacon, a show was launched that would raise the bar of television excellence with its thoughtful, incisive comment. Its charm. Its sophistication. Its warmth. That show, of course, Sam, It'd be blue heelers, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And we also started that year. Look, I'm no, sorry, if mate. you don't want to listen for the rest of the story, you can get <laughs> I can feel it home, mate. <laughs> The belief was that the Sunday footy show was going great and we had our grand final show which happened to be, you know, prior to the grand final midweek and that was fantastic and rated exceptionally well and then they were worried will they cook the goose that laid the golden egg by going once a week, um, midweek, every week of the footy season. We've got the animals over there from the enclosure of St Kilda. We'll be talking to them later on. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the football show for season 1994. So we started off, Ed, and uh, we had no idea what we were doing, let's be honest. Uh, was it ever important that we took ourselves or was it important that the footy show was taken seriously? Uh, I think it, it was important to take it seriously when we broke stories. And that was the thing that no one could actually get their finger on how we broke stories. We uh, did big issues like HIV and football and broke women and, uh, in football and all that type of stuff. But at the same time, we uh, enjoyed ourselves and had a bit of fun because that's what footy was all about. It was trying to get people feeling like you were being let in on the secret. I think it's a healthy thing to have um, fists and cuffs in a club. I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you did play no, I think it is. I can remember back... Yeah, we had fists of cuffs in our club there at one stage quite a few years ago. I can still remember the coach sitting over there with a smile on his face in the corner watching. He thought it was fantastic. Great competitive stuff. But under what circumstance? I mean, are we talking at the club? Well, This was a, uh, an end-of-season function. You just can't punch on there. Yes, you can. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Yes. And here they are, Sammy. The footy show pioneers. Have a look at them. Ah, yes. Now, we had a man for whom English was his second language don't know where this boy is. This lad got in a spot of bother. Viscount Sir Lord, Vice Regal Sir Edward Maguire. Hallelujah. An idiot. A man who pinched. Suki Suki Lala and Saint Timmy, who I think now works on community television. It was just sort of crazy and disjointed, and I don't think any of us. Well, I went home after it. I remember saying to my wife, "Look," she said, "Well, I had to go." And I said, oh, "It's chaotic. It's stupid. It's." <laughs> I said, "If it lasts a couple of weeks, I'll be lucky." And... I mean, a lot of the time you just you sat there and you listened and you, you basically followed what was going on when you're supposed to be a part of it. 
but you know, as I said, there was so much packed into it, it was it was hard to get in. The thing about the footy show uh, back in the early days was the fact that when the red light went on, we made up this win along, a bit like jazz singers. We had no idea what we were doing. And uh, it was nervy, oh, it was scary, because I've never been on TV. I had no idea what was going to happen. But at the end of the day, you just had to be yourself. Daggy, uh, of course, when he released his book last year, said that he's now written one book more than he's actually read. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> Or coloured in. <laughs> Doug was interesting because people had to fight hard to get Doug on the show. People said he was just some bogan from the western suburbs. Of course, he ended up being absolutely fantastic. The first year, Tim Watson was so good that uh, Channel 7 pinched him before we even got to the end of the year. And, of course, Jason Dunstall's got on too. Well, a lot of people didn't want Jason Dunstall because they oh, said Dermot was the flamboyant Hawthorne person. And, of course, Dermot had just gone to Sydney that year and that Dunstall was boring because he just took marks and kicked goals. As we turned out, he was a little bit better than that. How are you? Yes, very well, thank you, Piggy. Terrific. <laughs> hey, I knew you'd get in early. By Look, the way, Dermot, um... what do you think about him knocking off the vice-captaincy, the tip-top ad, and, uh, of course, now your seat here in Channel 9? Oh, he's on a roll. You know, they had to put in a pizza hut out at Waverley now that Hawthorne <laughs> had moved out there, because Piggy goes past and <laughs> jobs a few on a more serious note, please, Dermot. On a more serious note, um, you you're proving be to be of uh, great value to Sydney, as you were to us over the last couple of years. <laughs> and, um... But to give the common man a voice, the powers that be opted for... This man, Trevor Marmalade. What were they thinking? Uh, is that the, our Kino girl, Nikki McCarthy, uh, up yes. in the box there? It is, and... Uh, She's was... waiting for the ball to drop. She's at the wrong end. <laughs> 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 yeah, ha Harry, don't duck straight off, mate. You left your car keys over here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about football brains on the panel. We've got Bickley's, Buckley's and none. <laughs> Well, here, the Western Bulldogs here says 19% more likely to say they were born to shop. <laughs> which means that 81% uh, were more likely to say they're born to shoplift. <laughs> <laughs> but at 9.30 Thursday night, I thought this is the time slot owned by the greats. Graham Kennedy, Bert Newton, uh, Don. Don Lane, Ernie Sigley, your personal best friend in life. I and love uh, Ernie. all those sorts of people. And I thought this is fantastic. How big time can you be? Studio 9, Channel 9. And the first ad break came up, and it was a one-minute ad, which you couldn't... No-one could buy a one-minute ad on the footage show those What was days. it about? It was for a strip joint. Uh, yeah, there was a little bit of um, worry what we were doing. We didn't know what we were getting ourselves into, but um, uh, Eddie just beautifully developed, and Sam became Sam Newman. Are <laughs> we still going down here? Yeah. Still, yeah. still... <laughs> now, let's, <laughs> let's cut a long story short, Glenn. Mm. you got to bolt through the snag, haven't you, mate? <laughs> And what would you know? Turns out the great unwashed thought we were geniuses. Couldn't get enough of us. I didn't know this until about two years later, but uh, reluctantly, the Sydney office said, this show won't work, you've got six weeks to rate an 18, and then we're going to pull it. Uh, luckily, we rated an 18 the first night. Coming up, all the bits we love to remember. And all the bits we try to forget, including Sam's. <laughs> Is that uh, Eminem or s and <laughs> 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 Could have been very embarrassing, Sammy. If anyone here had had a magnifying glass. <laughs>
in all the years that I've covered footy, and it's been a fair while now, so when I was 14, this is the most bizarre true story of all time. An AFL captain has today, and I have in front of me, a deed poll name change, has changed his name for one week to Whiskers. We're not sensationalising the life of Jim Cracker, and here's Jim Cracker's first moments of freedom in the last eight years. You're actually now a free man again. You're back oh, in town. Good freedom, bro. <laughs> there you go, mate. A, a rainbow might be a good luck charm. <laughs> Freedom's a pot of gold, bro. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have Glenn Archer on the stage. Please welcome back Mr Wayne Carey. The sports departments of the, uh, the Herald Sun and the Age and the Australian would wait uh, and hope they'd hurry up, hope the first break had come and at about 9.45 wait to see what was on the footy show. Sure, Ed liked to be first with the big news stories, but there were plenty of times when we were the big news story. Of course, when you say we, Sam, you mean you. Exactly. <laughs> Sam, let's uh, go right off the top. What the hell happened? Uh, well, what happened? Mm. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I got run over it. <laughs> Should we warn children now to look away if you don't want to read the score? What do you think of that? Allegedly went down quicker than a bucket of chicken at Dermot's place, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a bad streak, let's be honest, Ed. I'm having a bad... If I fell into a barrel full of nipples, I'd come out sucking my thumb, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm late, mate. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, this is, this is as close as we could get. He's not here. And we'd been sending Nicky up because, and yeah. quite rightly so. He's about as reliable as a plastic watch, Nicky. <laughs> he was here. Yeah. And we didn't front. And uh, you came back in with the black face on and... We were coming out of the commercial break and the audience was applauding. Mm. And I remember just turning like that and, and seeing you. Mm. And you're right, as you went past, I think I... I know what you said. You'd, what you'd never, ever say it, ever you went... And I heard that and uh, that was it. And you uh, fell off the chair uh, then. What, did, what, did, what was your reaction when I said that? I actually started, broke into a cold sweat. I thought, <laughs> I've done my dash here, this is it. And I uh, thought I was going to be reprimanded. <laughs> <laughs> The biggest one is obviously when I pulled Sam's pants down and to see Eddie rolling on the ground, um, which I'd never seen before, and his reaction probably made me realise, oh, yes, I've definitely done something wrong, but uh, it was great to get a reaction like that from Eddie, who is not only president of the Collingwood and uh, now running the show at, at Channel 9, but uh, just to see him sort of letting loose and, and having a laugh, it made me... Uh, a bit concerned, but it made me pretty proud that uh, he was pretty happy. For a great 150th, mate, just... <laughs> I remember going to the break, uh, and I've got the pie all over me, and Sam's limping over the other side because he put his back out, and, um, uh, and Ed goes, what? What is... What? Tell me, someone tell me what's happened. And, no one could explain uh, to Ed, and then after the show, it kind of blew up again. And how dare you do this? And you know, this is ridiculous and disrespecting the panel. But that's part of it. I think that the best thing for me over the years, best and worst thing, has been Friday morning, where I'd wake up <laughs> and turn on the radio, and all hell would be breaking loose, yeah. and I'd hear the, the the show being replayed back on the radio. One topic that had audiences intrigued from day one was the stormy relationship between two of the biggest egos in football. Yourself, of course, and the legendary Jason Peggy Dunstall. Bungy, the chief, the silverback. I enjoyed any chance I got to put Sam in his place. That, that to me, just became my sole goal on the entire show. It just, it, I, I amused myself at times just by wanting to have a crack at him um, because he just he brings that out of you, I think. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, it's getting a bit hot for you as the captain and the, trying to keep the uh, shade or heat off the old bonds there, mate. Uh, was you it the ca summer. carnival atmosphere? You could have taken this down to the beach, down at surface <laughs> after the game. This is just the sort of stupidity that annoys me. <laughs> Coppertone have rung in. Uh, they have uh, been willing to sponsor Hawthorne with Factor 15 next year. The season obviously hotting up, of Jace, course, and uh, that will be down, exciting Jace. for them. Sit her down, Jay. How much to the Royal Children's Hospital appeal if he kisses me on the lips? Oh, <laughs>
I actually got hate mail from people that said I'd violated his civil rights. We're talking about an imbecile by the name of Sam Newman and people jumping to his defence accusing me of violating his civil rights. I couldn't believe it. Well, there's only one person that's given me more serves than the Chief over the years. And who's that, Sam? That'd be Val. Giving you nothing but respect. It's a very popular uh, desserts going around the AFL at the moment. There's the uh, Adelaide turnover. And this is the uh, Sam Newman tart. As you can see, it's not very well developed. <laughs> Show video, there it is. Let's have a look at the caption above Sam's head. It says, Still will Ford, we put people in front of cars. <laughs> Sam used to be called the Bible. Is that right? Uh, yeah, they'd always find him in cheap motels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other news this week uh, netballers have been banned from playing if they're pregnant. Yes. Well, there's an opportunity, Sam. You could wipe out a whole sport on your own. <laughs> Show Melbourne and the award goes to the footy show AFL. The winner is the footy show AFL and the Logie goes to AFL show uh, the footy show AFL. <laughs> no, the footy show AFL. Yep, you got it. By now, the footy show was a veritable juggernaut. The Logie cabinet was fair bulging, and as you can imagine, everyone was getting in on the act. Hello and welcome to the footy <laughs> show. What a big week it has been in football. <laughs> <laughs> I slipped on my mirror. I I slipped on my mirror. Doug Hawkins is the English patient. But that one whole year just listening to the shit from Sheedy. Sheedy. <laughs> no, I'll never get used to not listening to the shit from Sheedy. <laughs> Oh, wake up, Sam. It'll be OK. Look, Ricky Lake's starting. Go, Ricky. Go, Ricky. <laughs> Go! Uh, that'll be all right. Think... Takes... We'll have to rock him to break the suction. You're still my agent. Yes! Yeah! Eddie Maguire is... Eddie Maguire. If you ask me what the proudest thing about being involved in the footy show has been, has been uh, that the fact that uh, when we started it, Craig Kelly was on the halfback flank for Collingwood and Ricky Nixon was a PE teacher at Kerry Grammar. And we've been able to see footballers make huge living, commentators go forward and uh, to have played some sort of part in that I think uh, is the best thing that our show could take away from it. Certain segments became audience favourites. And then there were the others, like Billy's Wheel. Oh, the big fella's got it up! <laughs> Can he do it? The big fella, his hands on the mat, and he's got it up! I'd be on air like at 10 maybe, and then it got to a 10.30, and then it got to 11. 
It was very difficult to, to not have a drink with the country folk. So you'd have to join in a shout, but I'd be in five different shouts. By the time I was on at 11 o'clock, I'd actually forget what I was doing. So luckily Channel 9 seemed to produce it, actually find me and stand me up on stage. But it was fantastic. And, and of course it wouldn't finish then either. As soon as the uh, broadcast finished, I wouldn't finish or the, or the, or the uh, footy club wouldn't finish. So it would go on to all hours. But I, I don't think Nikki, my wife, I don't think it was her favourite segment. So I had to make a big decision. And I'll miss her, yeah. The wheel was good. <laughs> Almost Footy Legends showcase the best and most obscure of our grassroots footy. We're looking for a big screamer here. Thank you very much. And, uh, the best one we've had a few requests for, uh, Ed. It's our uh, Indigenous friend putting up a bit of a chase. And good to see. And one of the gutsiest plays you'll ever see, Trev. And here we go, a bit of a highlight from the Seagull. Western Jets versus Geelong Falcons. Have a look at this kick for goal. We'll show it again. Like lines up into the breeze and the ball goes backwards. A guy's lining up for 30 metres out. We see the ball look at the top left, into the goals, and back it goes. That is the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. This is when we got uh, a lot of, lot of talk him. about this one. Dougie Ensor, the uh, Noble Park player, who once kicked uh, 60 goals in a game. He's in the uh, Guinness Book of Records. And have a look at that geezer. It looks painted on, doesn't it? Look at those stripes. You'd put the house it's on, Doug, wouldn't you? Oh, Deliberates. In he comes. And what an absolute disgrace. That's a shocker, Dougie. Legend has it, it was even responsible for launching the career of an absolute high flyer, Trev. Big specy, specky here from Russell Robertson from the Tassie Mariners. That's the first time we'll see uh, Russell. And second grab here by Russell Robertson of the Tassie Mariners. The big grab here and came down with the knees into the opponent's head. Got to be happy about that. It's a bit of an emotional thing for me, the football show, I guess, and the fact that uh, it, it's, it's made everything that I have today, really. I mean, I'd probably still be back in Tassie. I'd be playing football or something like that down there, working down there, but um, I'm actually living my dream um, for the last 10 years and uh, and I have to thank, you know, Eddie and the boys. It turned out the Tasmanian with the mighty leap could also hit the high notes. And he wasn't the only one. That's life. That's what all the people say. Put the divvy, 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 divvy up the cash. Welcome back to the same old show that you left about. I got chills, they're multiplying. And I'm losing control. Cause the power you're supplying, it's electrifying. And Sam, good to see you singing there the same way as you work on the show, with absolutely no notes. Speaking of which, time for Mailbag. As my niece is, in, is an ardent fan of yours, I'd be pleased if you could write a birthday greeting and sign same on card enclosed and return to me so as I can forward the same to her at the appropriate time. John Crichton from Hallam. It's addressed to Mr. S. Newman, care of HSV, Channel 7, Proprietary <laughs> Limited, 1 to 19 Well Street, South Melbourne. Was that 10 years ago or something, was it? Look, fair <laughs> income, John. Now, come, get off your chair and come close to the television, all right? <laughs> come on. Come on. You dickhead. <laughs> I am an intelligent Frankston resident who... <laughs> <laughs> no point going on, mate. It's obviously a letter full of lies. Dear Sam, you dickhead, slash... Slash, you legend. <laughs> I have never been so horrified, slash, laughed so hard <laughs> at your antics on the footy show. You are an absolute prick. <laughs> slash, comic visionary. <laughs> <laughs> Who has had his day, slash, still at the top of his tree in the cutting edge <laughs> of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, he did not write it. He only wrote half of it. <laughs> <laughs> the 
this is a compilation letter of all them <laughs> and about the seven million others that we couldn't bring out. And the sooner the powers that be at Channel 9 give you the ass slash give you a well-deserved pay rise <laughs> for all your hard work, the better. You clearly went too far slash raised the bar in relation to all-time great television moments. <laughs> And your attack on David Schwartz was an absolute disgrace, slash, a piece of slapstick excellence <laughs> that would shame the Three Stooges. <laughs> In closing, I will never watch your show again, slash, have Ark welded the remote control <laughs> so that it's permanently affixed to Channel 9. And all my friends think the same, slash, all my friends think the same. <laughs> And from day one, I was more than happy to venture out into the street and speak to the intelligentsia, which is mainstream Australia. In, uh, Don't Ron think I'm one of those dills you pick up, because I'm not. <laughs> Madam? No, I'm not. I'm a fella, like you. <laughs> Well, I'll have a stab at it. How are you, madam? Good, thanks. Who do you go with? My mum. Your dear old mum. Does she shout out a lot? Mm, only when she's spastic. Oh, Sam, we're magnanimous in defeat. You know the way I take those things. Where's and, the uh... wheel? You got the wheel? Where's the wheel? The fact is, it's the world's my gynecologist. Oh, Jesus, that's nothing. <laughs> I'd have, a, have a look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's going a lot better than I thought it was in this street, to be honest. You had a cup of tea with me in Melton. Look at that! I remember you now. Well, sacrifice Martina Navratilova down Melbourne Town to Diana the Huntress, and we'll feed into her and then he'll play football like a legend. Oh, I'm glad we came up to Dalesford because the last word from this extraordinarily visionary woman about... We're going to put what? him Navratilova's ball! Goodbye! Coming up next, magic moments with some absolute greats of the game. <laughs> Look, Rob, uh, I'm going to have to... Seriously, I don't want to put you in this position. I know it's embarrassing. Well, you want to know about the umpire or not? He chased me around all f***ing day. <laughs> no, seriously, we're going to have to ask... Hey, I'll leave take over the show, people. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we love having you on. We appreciate well, hey, you being here. Shut up and let me tell my story. Look, you know what umpires are like? I'll call them divorce. It's <laughs> about that big. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, we might have to call it into this interview, OK? And, uh, look, I'm no, sorry, no, mate. If you don't want to f***ing listen for the rest of the story, you can get <laughs> Well, just another day at the office when Robert Muir is involved, Trev. And he's working on one of the renovation shows, I believe, now, Sam. And he's become an umpire. Goes to show you can beat them and join them. <laughs> but the show hasn't just been about us making tools of ourselves. Oh, really? We've had some absolute gentlemen who have dropped by over the past 12 years. I've been hanging around your old stamping ground. I've been up to my neck and good cheer. But this day we're playing Been Melbourne. I hated Melbourne. Back. You know that. Hey, I does all that. Was it? And here, hi, hi. We go down there. And uh, hello. Poor, poor fellas from Richmond, you know, yes, right, oh, come on, <laughs> let's get on with the business. And uh, this day, we, it was a half back flank of Melbourne. He put young Wilson into the fence. And the other fella sang out down there, that's right, put him in the fence. You know, and I said, I'll put you in the bloody fence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I spoke like that too. <laughs> and <laughs> this big fella, six foot, uh, didn't weigh much, about six foot three and a half, didn't weigh much, I must admit that. And he's coming through and I let go. Oh, it was one of the most beautiful time bumps I've ever done. <laughs> oh, he, he went up in the air and stayed there a while and come down. <laughs> So out comes Dr. Cordner, you know. Oh, yes, Dr. Cordner. Dr. Cordner. And he's got a sheet, and they've got the, what's your name, you know, the thing they take him off the ground. The stretch, Jack. So they put him on, he put him on, you know, 
pull the blanket right over him. <laughs> after, you know, after the doctor had felt his pulse and everything, oh, I said, good God, I've killed him. <laughs> and, but I was still wild. I was still wild about the Wilson this and so I'm walking off at this stage and I get up to Ray Dunn coming yeah. up now, a solicitor, yeah. a criminal solicitor. And the president. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, he said, that was a good bump, Jack. He loved that stuff, you know. <laughs> I said, I think I've killed him, Ray. He said, it's only manslaughter. I'll get you to walk that very <laughs> But the man who sticks in our memory most, as well he should, is Mr Football, Teddy Whitten. You've only got to watch the football these days and you see, out comes a stretcher. And they don't get pushed on now, they just jump on some of these players. <laughs> One player jumped on the other day with the cramp. <laughs> Under a stretcher, plays held up. Everything stops while a stretcher goes off in our day when you got it down the middle and you're really hit with a full-blooded hip and shoulder. You went to hospital! <laughs> now they go off the ground and they're back three minutes later kicking goals and running around as if nothing's happened to them. My mate Fatty Brown. Time's now, up, when then. he went off, he went off and erupted like a volcano up there in Rabaul at the moment. He took them on two at a time. And I look at these players now, and when you bounce off them, off, they're a little man. bit soft. Get off. Don't you get tell off, me to get off, Because it won't oh, be long time. before you're sitting oh. on that side with us. <laughs> it's uh, been a very emotional night, and we've just heard some news through, which I'm sure will uh, touch the hearts of all football supporters. Uh, we've only just found out in the break that the great uh, E.J. Witten, uh, Ted Witten, has uh, passed away tonight. Probably for me, the night that uh, I'll always remember was the night we announced that uh, Ted Whitney yeah. died. And uh, because it was raw emotion, and of course uh, we came out and it was the last break of the night, and uh, just to, you could almost feel the oxygen being sucked out of the studio as people just went silent. <laughs> yeah. And to look across and see Doug Hawkins yes. and, and yourself and everybody being uh, so emotionally... Melancholy. Yeah, it was a really emotional night. Eddie got out of his seat, he came across and he said, listen, Hawk, I've got some bad news. Um, Ted's just passed away. And immediately then I knew, we all knew Ted was fairly sick, but we didn't think that, that he was going to, you know, pass away so quickly. And, uh, and all of a sudden, um, we're back on live TV again, you know, and Eddie sort of has broken the news that Ted's passed away. Sam's had a little bit to say, and he struggled. Sam really did struggle that night. I have no, no doubt about that, because he was very, very close to Ted, as I was. And then it was my turn, and Eddie asked me about the great E.J. Witten, and I just said, mate, what a great bloke Ted was. I, I loved him, you know, and I, I... It was very emotional. And if I'd known early, uh, if, if it had happened early, I don't think the show would have went on, as Sam said. So it was, a, it was an emotional night, and I'm sure that's the way it come across. It was just a, an amazing experience. Look at Ed, Ed, how much does he love Nathan But Fetty, Ed, Fetty, I want to ask you a question, mate. If you came home and found Nathan Greasy Buckley enough. in bed with your wife, which side would you get in? <laughs> Come on. Which side? Which side? <laughs> which side? <laughs> Sam, I've never felt like this before, but... <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna blow it. Ever thought I'd hear myself say these words? I can't take any more head in. <laughs> You've got to lose one. But in fairness, we're going to miss His Eminence, the Vice-Chancellor of the Exchequer, Viceroy Viscount Sir Edmund. <laughs> yes, Sam, but it's good to know that if ever we need him, we can just pick up the phone and call the assistant to his secretary's PA. <laughs> Which is Brodie Holland, isn't it? Place for Collingwood, doesn't he? <laughs> just getting a uh, progress oh. report on <laughs> the fairing of Collingwood. The, uh... Beatings are taking a beating. Collingwood Supporters Club Halftime Activity Book. <laughs> uh, see if you can get through the maze. 
try and finish off that and recognise what it is. <laughs> See if you can connect the dots. There it is. It's a good book. Encyclopedia. It is a good book. I was actually given uh, this uh, by the cops because I had my house burgled. They wanted to be looked through to see if I recognised anyone. <laughs> Collingwood supporters done. What's next week's question? Are imbeciles stupid? <laughs> Can you give me an easier question, Sammy? Like, what time does the 7.30 report start? Or, you know, <laughs> you know, what are lamb chops made of? For a, <laughs> which way do the needle exchange? On a, on a show like the footy show, in particular with our uh, lack of success on the whole in the last sort of uh, 10 years, it hasn't been an easy time for him, but... Yeah, he made the most of the, uh, those years when we were winning more than we lost. Now, Lee Collingwood, uh, input, if you like, in the show over the years has been Trevor doing 15 jokes at Collingwood's expense every week, you giving it to me about Collingwood. I barely mentioned Collingwood on the show. We on. <laughs> Hello. Is this a test, uh, is this a test run? We, when are we I doing didn't, it? I didn't. I didn't mention Collingwood we're much on. at all. It's you bikes, always getting him in trouble. I hardly mentioned Collingwood. How's that, Sam? He never once mentioned Collingwood, and I never once bagged them. Anyway, we soon realised it was time to spread our wings. And our half-forward flanks. And hit the road. Evening, everybody, and welcome to Star City here in Sydney. But now, some words of encouragement for the city of Adelaide and the uh, state of South Australia from your very own Ambassador Sam Newman. One of the quaint customs fast disappearing from most civilised countries are roll away stairs. <laughs> Not so here in Adelaide. One of the joys and links of a bygone era, particularly if the weather is inclement. That is, it's pissing down. <laughs> Pity we couldn't just sit on the plane and they roll the city out to us. Ah, yes, Adelaide. So much more than just half an hour behind. Side of the border here, and when I step over here, I'm on the side of the border. <laughs> and when I step back, I'm on the Victorian side again, and back into. <laughs> Eventually, even Australia wasn't big enough to contain us. It was time to conquer the world. It was 1997. We booked our flights to London, we alerted the Queen, everything was in place. Then what happened? Um, your girlfriend mistook you for a speed hump. Oh, yeah. But in 2001, and again in 2005, we finally did make it to the mother country. Good evening to everybody in Australia, and good afternoon to everybody here at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane in London! So we thought the show could do with a bit of a, bit of a, a boost at that stage, middle of the year, and uh, we went out on a limb as usual. Uh, there was no money to go and do it, and uh, at one stage, in fact, management came to me and said, uh, we're not going to do this, and I actually offered to underwrite the theatre myself because I was so Did confident. You? Yeah, I don't know if you knew that, but I, mean, uh, I, didn't know that I said, well, I'll underwrite it myself. Uh, Mighty neighbourly of you. It was, yeah. I was, I was looking for a cut of the action because I was pretty confident. I've been overseas and it was <laughs> thanks to you. <laughs> anyway, so we, uh, we uh, were prepared to underwrite it. It didn't matter because it actually uh, sold out in, in about ten minutes with all the Aussies lining up around the block. The, the Drury Lane, you got no idea. It's a four-level, probably 500-year-old theatre. And the poor old um, people who worked there, who would have just had these theatre goers, and they would have been nice and quiet and well mannered. And you got these footy ferals that come in with different jumpers and yelling out stuff, and, and they thought it wasn't going to work. You know, well, we won't pack. They, this won't get packed out. But sure enough, it, it was full, and it was fantastic to walk out in that stage. You know, we had Warney there, and he was he's loved and all that. And they just went berserk. The, the, and there's four levels of them. And they're all there cheering and going berserk. So that was just fantastic. Though. And the great memories, and we had a great time over there. Well, by far the biggest show of the year is the grand final footy show. And many years ago, management suggested we might be able to fill Rod Laver Arena. We didn't believe it. But they were right once again, Truth. We still can't believe it. We can I 
I love the grand final shows because you really didn't do a lot. A lot of it was pre-taped and what happened during the year, but just running into different personalities and, and just how big it is, you've got no idea. The first night that we walked onto Rod Laver Arena for a grand final footy show and uh, the place was packed and jumping, it was unbelievable and it'll be a memory I'll never forget. The first grand final show in 1996 unveiled a spectacular routine that got bigger and bigger. The player review. It also proved to be yet another great chance for Sam and the boys to get their kid off. To be a door there. <laughs> it was once. Well, who filled that in? Well, we've got it now, haven't if we? If you're not going to ask me to the production meetings, Ed, <laughs> I didn't give anyone authorisation to fill the door in. <laughs> Remember, we used to greet guests through the door? Yeah. Well, don't ever do that again. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll take I'll a break. I'll give you one, uh, five seconds. Do you want to belt me? Go on, have we'll a crack at it. We'll take a break. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, boy, you got any guts? Do it! Go on! <laughs> The only concern I have about the footy show going on now is who's going to control Sam. And I suppose before we go on, when we sit down and have some dinner and, uh, and not really talk about the show, but just uh, see how everyone's going, um, Sam's always the worry and Eddie's always pulling him back in line, but Eddie's not going to be there to do that anymore. So I think it might be pretty interesting. Uh, I must admit the hardest thing for me uh, is, is leaving the footy show. I get very emotional about it and uh, I'm, I'm delighted that uh, Gary and James are going to jump in and that we're going to do the show a little bit differently and that uh, you and Trevor are still on board because uh, it has become a major part of uh, the fabric of, of the AFL States and uh, of course with the franchise with Freddie Voughton and the boys in Sydney it's been uh, a fantastic effort. The fact that you'll be there for a 13th year yeah. means that you and Trevor will actually yeah. equal Graham Kennedy's run of 13 yeah. years in a row. I'll just miss out myself. But uh, 13, I thought it was a good, good lucky number. I'll jump at before we get to it. But uh, no, I'll miss it. And no, uh, it's going to actually kill me tonight watching the show go to air live at 9.30. I'll be sitting there, I'll be barracking for everybody. But geez, I'll be doing everything not to come in, I can tell you. Good God, 12 years. You get less for murder, Trev. Yep, we are going to miss him though, Sammy. Who? Ed. Oh, yeah. Well, let's push on into year 13. All right, mate, you ready to go? You know what we're doing tonight? No. Got your rundown? No. Oh, sounds like we're ready then. Sounds like we are.